So what's going on guys, DIY Dan here again, and this is another episode of Day to Day Around the House. So I actually bought my house new about 10 years ago, and it came with these Sterling top flush, dual flush water saving toilets. These toilets have actually been really reliable. However, about a year ago, I started having a constant drip that I could hear coming from each one of the toilets. So before I realized I could just buy a flush valve seal, I actually bought an entire flush valve. So I'm going to be showing you how to do just the seal first. That's about a five minute process. And then I'm actually going to be showing you how I replace the entire flush valve, which includes replacing the push buttons on the top lid of the toilet, because that's about your most common failure on one of these toilets. And keep in mind, even if you don't have this exact same toilet, or the exact same looking flush valve, the concept's gonna be pretty much the same for all brands and makes. So here is a chapter index of what takes place in this video, so if you don't need to watch the whole thing, you can bypass what you don't need to see. So I don't waste your time. So let's get to it. So right here I'm gonna let you listen to the leak that I had. So the first thing you're gonna to wanna to do, which isn't absolutely necessary for this repair, because it does go so quickly, is shut the water off to the toilet, which is just a push-pull valve, so I pulled it to shut it down. So I ended up going on Amazon and finding the seal that I need to fix this leak, and it was about $7. You could also get a five pack for around 18, I believe. Now, if you're deciding just to do the flush valve seal, you do wanna verify what brand of flush valve you have, because there are different sizes to these seals. However, the concept for changing out this seal should be pretty similar for most brands. Once getting that part, all you will need to do is lift the lid off of the toilet. Make sure you lift it directly up if possible so you do not catch the rods on the flush valve and possibly break them. And then you pull the flush valve out. On this design, there was two plastic clips that you had to compress and then just lift it out. Pull the seal off the bottom. I made sure that the seal was the right size and thickness. Make sure that the groove that the seal fits in is free of debris and then just start from one side putting the seal in the groove and work it around. You'll notice the water is still running on this toilet because I did not shut the water valve off because this only took me about two and a half minutes to repair and I just didn't see the need in shutting the water off. Then all you have to do is snap that valve back into position. Your flush valve will have two different colors of push buttons on the top of it. Make sure you got those in the same direction as before you took it off, otherwise your half flush and full flush will be reversed. Right here you can have a good look at that old seal and how warped and worn out it is. A couple of years ago I did flip the seal over and that did stop the leak for a little while, but it eventually came back. If you chose to shut the water off, go ahead and push that back in so you can supply water to verify your repair. Before putting the lid back on the tank, I took some Goo Gone and cleaned out the push buttons. There was a layer of lime on the push buttons because of the hard water evaporating, creating a mineral deposit. The Goo Gone did work okay, however a product like CLR probably would have been the way to go, I just didn't have any at the time. Now phones are great devices to take pictures as you take stuff apart so you can make sure you put it back the same way, but if you did forget, you could push those flush valve buttons on the top and see which one empties the tank halfway and which one empties the tank all the way and that will help you determine which way the flush valve goes in so you can make sure your buttons are not reversed. And if you are reversed, all you have to do is twist that flush valve around. When setting the lid back down into place, you want to make sure you do not slide it into place because the rods coming off the push button could get caught on the flush valve and snap. Now because of my pallet wall, I actually had to set the back part of the lid on top of the tank and angle it down into position, but it would be better to go straight down if possible. Then I went ahead and verified my repair by flushing it a couple times and making sure I no longer had a drip. Everything was good, and that's all there is to replacing the flush valve seal. Let's say you need to go into a little bit more in depth. Now we're going to be going over how to replace the entire flush valve. This also will repair a constant leak going into the toilet. So the first thing you're going to want to do is shut the water off. So most likely if you've got a dual flush toilet, you're going to have one of these push-pull style valves. Go ahead and pull that to shut the water down. 
Then you will need to take the lid off of the toilet. Make sure you lift it directly up because you don't want the rods that are attached to the push buttons to hang up on the flush valve and possibly break them off. Then I mark the water level of the tank being full, then press the half flush button, let that go down, and then mark that, and then the full flush button, and mark to that as well. So you have a reference for going back together. Then using a towel, I remove the rest of the water that was in the bottom of the tank, so when we remove it, it does not make a mess on the floor. Once removing all the residual water, I used a ratcheting wrench to remove the two nuts that held the tank to the bottom of the toilet. If the bolt is spinning as you try and loosen them, you can use a screwdriver on the top side to hold the bolts in place. After that, I pulled the supply water hose off of the tank. I was able to loosen this by hand. You might need a pair of pliers to break it loose at first. Then all you have to do is lift the tank straight up and off of the bottom part of the toilet. I got a couple 2x4s and set the tank on top of those in an easy position where I could get to the inside of the tank and the bottom of the tank at the same time. If you're going to do the entire flush valve, you'll probably need a seal kit to reseal the tank to the bottom part of the toilet. I removed the two bolts that hold the tank to the bottom part of the toilet, then removed the fill hose that goes into the flush valve from the float by squeezing the clip and pulling it up and out of the flush valve. I removed the top of the flush valve by pressing the two clips that were holding it to the lower part of the flush valve. Then I held the bottom part of the flush valve on the inside of the tank while loosening the nut on the bottom side of the tank using this universal oil filter wrench or obviously a pair of channel locks would work as well. And that's all there is to removing the flush valve. This would be a good item to order by application. I actually went and grabbed one from Lowe's figuring they'd have the most common size. So I ended up buying a three inch and I actually needed a two inch for my toilet. So I ended up having to do this job twice and returning that one to Lowe's and ordering one off of Amazon. And after looking a little closer, there was a tag inside the tank of my toilet that did verify that it was a two inch flush valve. So apparently there's two main sizes of flush valves, two inch and three inch. If you can't find the tag on your toilet, you could just measure the hole in the bottom of your tank. When I measured mine, it was two and a half inches and that was for a two inch flush valve. So I'm guessing it would measure closer to three and a half inches for a three inch. So this is the one I ended up getting off of Amazon and I have no quality concerns with it. Before setting the new one in the tank, I played with all the adjustments so I knew how everything worked, including the half flush, full flush water levels and the water height in the tank to make those adjustments easier once it was installed in the tank. I made sure the rubber seal was on the bottom of the flush valve and then set it into place. Make sure you have it at the same orientation as it was before you took the old one out and held that flush valve by hand on the inside of the tank while tightening down the nut on the bottom of the tank with that oil filter wrench or a pair of channel locks. The new flush valve just had a hole that was perfect size for the fill hose. So I removed the clip from the old one and just pushed the hose into place on the new valve. I did end up buying a tank to bowl gasket kit and it was universal for all kinds of different toilets. And I didn't have any issues with this kit. I put the ceiling washers on the new bolts and set those in place. The bottom ceiling ring was different depending on the style of toilet and they tell you in the instructions on the back of that universal kit which one to use. So I went ahead and put that on the bottom of the flush valve and then set the tank in place. Then put the washers and nuts on both bolts and tighten those down by hand. The whole time I was tightening those down by hand I was wiggling the tank just to make sure it was centered on the bowl. Then using a wrench, I slowly tightened those nuts down, again wiggling the tank, and I stopped as soon as the tank felt firm because if you over tighten these, there is a chance you could crack the porcelain tank. Then I went ahead and put my water supply line back on and just tightened that down by hand. Then I turned the water supply on by pushing the valve back in on the wall and checked to make sure I didn't have any leaks while it was filling up around the bottom of the tank. 
I did not have any leaks. If you do, I would still slowly tighten those bolts down one at a time, making sure they're staying pretty even. And if it seems like it's getting way too tight and it's not sealing up, maybe that seal on the bottom of the flush valve got dislodged or is not centered properly and you might need to remove the tank and make sure that all looks good. Then I just played with the adjustment on the half and full flush valves. Now depending on the brand of flush valve you got, the adjustment may be different so you'll just have to look in your instructions. You can also use those lines that you made before pulling off the old valve as a reference and then just push those buttons and get it to those levels or make sure it's flushing good and that's all there is to it. So I did purchase a flush valve that came with a new push button setup as well because I had had one of these break about five years ago and this was one of the older ones so I figured I'd go ahead and change it out. So I removed the old push button. Now if you're just replacing the push button and putting it on the old flush valve you could just cut those rods the same length as what the old ones that you took off were. However, with a new flush valve, I didn't want to go off of that because the flush valve might be at a different height than what the old one was. In the instructions, it actually said to measure this, measure that, cut this, cut that, then check this. That actually made me feel like an idiot. What I ended up doing is taking the rods out of the push button, setting them on the flush valve and cutting them flush with the top of the lid. I knew these were gonna be a little long, but it was just a starting point. Then I threaded the rods back into the push button to the maximum amount they would go in. Then I set the push button in place. Then I got a reference using my finger of how much they were sticking up above the lid still. I removed the rods, cut that much off of each rod, then threaded them back in the push button, set it down in place again to make sure it was the right height. You do have some adjustment in the push button, so you don't have to be precise with the cut. Once I got it close with the cut, then I made the minor adjustments by unthreading and threading the rods in as necessary, and then locked them down with those black plastic lock nuts. Then I removed the lid and verified my half flush and full flush, put the nut on the bottom of the push button and tightened it down, and that's all there is to replacing that push button. So hopefully you guys enjoyed this video and it gave you some good information. If so, make sure you hit that like button and subscribe if you haven't already. I'd really appreciate it. The whole concept of my channel is to save you guys money by doing it yourselves and give you the most information in the least amount of time as possible so I don't waste your time. And I hope to see you next time. Have a good one. Later.